Hey folks, we'll get started in just another minute here. Okay. All right, good day everyone and welcome to today's LFN webinar. We are going to be discussing the evolution of the cloud infrastructure reference model and its applications. Um, our speakers today are Walter Kozlowski with Telstra and Tomas Fredberg with Ericsson. Uh, both gentlemen are here representing uh, the LFN community in their uh, discussions today. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items before we uh, jump into the webinar. Um, all attendees are going to be muted during the discussion. Uh, we will reserve some time at the end for open Q&A. And if you have questions throughout the presentation, there is a chat, there is a Q&A window at the bottom of the screen. So if you just click on the Q&A icon, uh, you can type in your question at any time. Um, we may answer some questions via, via typed response in real time. Otherwise, we will hold them until the end of the official presentation. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us. And without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Walter to get us started today. Thanks, Jill, for your kind presentation. It's a pleasure to be here and a very warm welcome to all participants. Uh, the title as we hear is uh, Cloud Infrastructure Reference Model and uh, its applications and its evolution. So let me just actually start from some background from technology and, uh, and industry and its evolution. Uh, so in this uh, diagram, we are trying, if you look at the top, I'm trying to present in a very simplistic perhaps way you now how the, the the technology is evolving. Uh, and obviously it's not really linear and it's not really you know, that simple, but I think it represents very well what's, what's been happening. Uh, so we started a few years ago with trying to virtualize uh, uh, network functions with the idea of NFV and NFVI and, and, and VNS. Uh, and moving to the cont containerized world where the, the workloads are actually represented in, in, in containers and moving and evolving towards cloud native. And the um, emerging technologies, which uh, some of them we know, and we will be touching upon some of them. Um, some of them are really emerging and, and will be emerging. Uh, in this background, if you look at this, this wheel in here, which presents, you know, how this interacts, it um, iterates through the, through the time. Uh, let us start from the industry challenges. So, um, plenty of them, but let's mention a few of them which are relevant for what we are doing. So, evolution towards cloud native, it's one of them. We know that from our practice that, you know, it's really very hard to, to produce cloud native uh, network uh, applications. Uh, coexistence of several virtualization technologies, we will be very much focusing on this because uh, you know, it doesn't happen that you know, one day you stop doing VNFs and start CNFs, right? It's, uh, in real life, it's not really happening. So they have to coexist, they have to migrate one to each other. At the same time, we don't want to create you know, hardware infrastructure for each one separately. We don't have to do too many silos in, in, our, in our environment. So we have to share the hardware infrastructure. It's pretty much a lot will be of about today about how we evolve our reference model to provide, you know, to look from the perspective of coexistence of several virtualization technologies sharing the same hardware. But we have to remember that, you know, this virtualization world in Telco, it's actually mainstream now, it's not experimentation. So everybody expects from us, right, to provide uh, telco great performance and 5G is a good example. And uh, on a practical terms, you know, whoever as myself, I know was the building or architecting 
or evolving and operating cloud infrastructure for network. We know that it's very hard to technically, to make it technically robust at the same time, viable from commercial perspective and open to some extent uh, possible. And it sometimes it feels like, you know, building a, an airplane while flying at a high speed because this is very high speed and dynamic uh, uh, environment. We probably know all of this. A major question is, which I didn't write here, is who can we trust? Who can we actually ask? How we make sure that different layers, different components will be working together? Uh, that that was what, what uh, why the industry responded and responds and uh, Linux Foundation networking is is, uh, is is very imminent in in this uh, and uh, a year and a half ago almost uh, CNTT was formed which uh, which uh, sounds at the moment that the cloud infrastructure telco task force is a is a task force uh, under LFN with uh, GSMA involved in this. We will be talking about this later on, working very closely with Open MLD and other projects like uh, Open uh, Distributed Infrastructure Manager, which we will be talking about this as well. With the idea that we have to join forces in, uh, in order to help each other in this journey, uh, we compete each other. It's obviously a commercial environment. But at the same time, uh, we have to collaborate, we have to work together. The idea is that with those actual initiatives under LFN, we want to show the way. We want to be ahead of development curve. That means because you know, many technology com companies, you know, many teams are developing things. And uh, we don't want, we want to make sure that we can actually align them around the generic and flexible model which can be implemented. And we have to find out what are the gaps in, in existing standards and existing models and somehow to address them uh, working with other organizations. Uh, we develop reference architectures, implementation and compliance, and we'll be talking about this uh, in a moment. So. What is coming out of this? It's uh, real life deployments uh, can actually benefit this in uh, in our effects in, in the request for something for for quota for for proposal. It's simplified by using the same language of reference model using the the defined profiles and, and relationship and how workloads are, uh, should be mapped to infrastructure uh, types. Uh, real life and implementation, let's think about 5G, IoT, Edge, which are happening and they can actually use the, the reference uh, models and reference architecture to drive them. Uh, so, and, and the other thing is that from the compliance part, you can actually get the confidence, uh, which we, we said, and confidence creates trust. Well, and this is actually, that was the mission of CMTT. If you look at this, uh, I won't repeat it, and it was written in the NFD type of uh, language, but it actually said that we have to actually create this uh, to reduce cost and time to market, everything we said a, a moment ago. So that was the mission, and to work for the work of, uh, for the benefit of the community. So this is a quite large community. As you can see, the major sponsor, as we said, is GSMA and Linux Foundation, but look at the logos, and, and I'm sure there's more at the moment. Uh, uh, there's plenty of service providers, technology companies, and open source uh, organizations. Uh, introducing the reference model within this context. It's, on the left-hand side, you can see the, the CMTT and the major um, uh, documentation major um, and specification and major uh, you know, um, uh, outputs. So reference models should provide agnostic direction for the for which can be implemented in reference architectures, which are by the implication are not really technology agnostic at the moment. We've got two RA1, which is related to which is basically OpenStack based. Uh, VM and OpenStack and RA2, which is uh, 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 the development and it's it going for the Kubernetes as a service. Uh, 
because of this, uh, it, it should also provide uh, reference model should also provide the, some requirements for VNF or CNF vendors to get them in their design, uh, at least from the perspective of how the workloads, the network workloads should actually work together, interact with the infrastructure. Uh, and GSMA is an ultimate owner of CNTT reference model. Uh, and actually, um, myself, I'm, I'm actually the leader of the works team or in the CNTT of preparing reference model. And next month, we are actually handing over to GSMA, which will be publishing this as a permanent reference document. And we are very happy about this because that means that this document will get a, a very large audience. Basically, this, the goal is about normalization of integration points and establishing some layers and, and how the, they should, the layers of architecture should work together. And uh, we will be, in, uh, I'll show this in a moment in, in the diagram. The approach is, let's talk it again, it's to make sure that we can have simultaneously different reference architectures, so OpenStack, Kubernetes, and others. Uh, multiple layers, multiple implementation using the shared hardware infrastructure layer. This is the main evolution. The first version of, uh, of the reference model, as you may guess, it was just OpenStack basically related. Uh, and, and that means that we actually, we, with, when we started introducing Kubernetes uh, uh, reference architecture, we, we needed to actually evolve this to make it more generic language and now we are trying to address the ability new to a simultaneous usage of different reference architecture in the same hardware then we had another set of problems which we are going to address this so uh, very much uh, in a, um, uh, a, a symbolic but overall diagram as it looks now after this uh, it consists of two major layers here uh, within the which we call cloud infrastructure, uh, it's basically it's former NFVI. Uh, so it's it's called hardware infrastructure layer and virtual infrastructure layer, and we'll be talking a lot about uh, today um, about details of this. So what what we are actually looking on the left hand side are the resources, so virtual resources, and we'll give an examples of them in a moment, and hardware resources. And then on the right hand side, we've got management of this. So we get virtual infrastructure manager, which can be traditional Veeam, and um, we'll show you something in the next slide, uh, a bit different um, possibilities as well. The introduction of, in this version of the model, we introduce something new, which is hardware infrastructure manager, uh, um, a component which uh, we define here. Uh, we're trying to define and, and uh, it wasn't really present in the original Etsy model. Look at this, uh, at the top we've got VNFs or CNFs, so basically you know, network workloads which can consume those resources and, and management clients. Uh, I, I, I would emphasize that we are talking about clients. It can be many different management um, clients which can use and, and, and work together with the infrastructure manager and hardware manager. So why we need those things here uh, is the next one, which, which I call the reference model realization diagram. It gives a bit of an example how, uh, and a deeper view of this. Yeah, we still have the same, same things here, right? VNF, CNFs, and management clients. Uh, and what are the aspects here? If you look at this symbolically, we've got three implementation um, uh, deployment types. One is traditional uh, VM on the hypervisor. The other one is get containers, you know, on top of VM uh, or virtual machine or containers on bare metal. It's a typical ones, but we can actually see some other you know, variants of this and, and the models have to actually accommodate this. Uh, if you look at the rank itself, we've got the, uh, Virtual infrastructure manager, the traditional beam uh, from uh, from Etsy model, and container infrastructure service manager, which actually 
will be actually uh, managing the container infrastructure service instances. Those are the elements which are actually mentioned in Etsy IFA 029. Uh, so they are standard as well from this perspective. The resources obviously is compute storage and network. And um, this here is a, is a new thing which we were trying to define. Uh, it's a hardware infrastructure manager we need in this context because uh, you know if you have different type of implementation of, of a virtual level then you have to actually somehow to talk in, in an abstracted way to these resources um, to make sure that we can actually use the same hardware infrastructure for many different types of, of virtualization and containerization. Uh, and there are some examples in, in, uh, in um, commercial work, uh, work of those. At the same time, that's part which we actually expect that this part will be actually developed as well by this by this other project we mentioned, Elephant Project, Odin, which is Open uh, uh, Distributed Infrastructure Manager, uh, based on DMT at, uh, uh, you know, Model, model here. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention that which is uh, a big problem in many other uh, aspects uh, of the deployment, which is not really in many models, it's SDN. And we can see that we've got several SDNs here symbolically, and we'll be talking in a moment about this. This relates to the fact that, you know, we you may have a different administrative domains which actually you know um, manage those different uh, in this multi-tenant uh, organization and different different type of deployment and that means that there may be different SDN so there may be different SDN controllers for uh, for IAS and CAS for containers as a service and many of them and also realization that you know there are elements of SDN in the network hardware infrastructure, which can be actually managed, for example, directly from some controller sphere, which can be an FVO or something else. Uh, that's basically you know, the, uh, the idea of this model uh, here. It's to provide the flexibility that we can accommodate this, this coexistence and, and migration from one to the other deployment uh, at the same time, you know, managing the shared hardware. Uh, at this point, uh, we want to actually go into more detail how the reference architecture should look like log from logical perspective. And uh, I hand it over to Thomas. Thomas, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Walter. So uh, I'm Thomas Fredberg, uh, and I'll be drilling down into the updated reference model in a short while. But before I do that, I'll stay on this page and, and say that uh, one of the important thing here is to enable the operators during the very long migration period of migrating from the current deployments of ENFs to the more cloud native CNFs. And, and by that also realizing that most operators will not build the separate new clouds for the cloud native applications and then gradually try to move over the hardware resources by just physically moving them. Um, so there is a, a, a need for a cloud infrastructure that enables the simultaneous infrastructure as a service instances and the container as a service instances, probably many of them, um, where the uh, operators will have likely a number of different infrastructure management operations group and therefore the, the administrative uh, domains that Walter talked about is important to enable them to be kept separate. Uh, with keeping those uh, operational groups uh, having a limited complexity to view into either a, a single cost environment or a single IAS environment or a single hardware infrastructure environment we will limit the blast radius of errors uh, and, and whatever faults that humans can do, as well as potential software faults and, and malicious code and so on and so forth that could exist. 
when it comes to the servers, the servers will normally be allocated to one virtualization instance, one cause or one IAS at a time. Uh, so they will just be managed like a normal OpenStack or Kubernetes or whatever it will be in those virtualization instances. So they are not really the problem here. But it's very, very unpractical to keep a statically assigned and physically separated network interconnecting a small pool of servers. Because whenever that small pool of servers run out, you need to physically hook up more servers, reconfigure your, your physical network for those servers. And when you're migrating from one of those pools over to another one, then you need to physically go in and reconfigure your network. So um, it would lead to overdimensioning of each pools uh, as well as complexity when you actually need to scale each and every of those small physical nodes. So the wanted position is that uh, we have a larger flexible server pool that are hosting multiple virtualization infrastructure instances, COS and IASs, where the VNFs could be migrated into CNFs or each and every all of the VNFs could be scaled or growing and shrinking on demand uh, with new hardware resources that's needed. But that requires interconnect services uh, with a data center ethernet switch fabric. And that is exactly why we are looking into the networking as the first thing, because that is the problem area uh, that needs to be attacked. Uh, the shared ethernet switch fabric uh, cannot necessarily be managed by any single one of those virtualization instances, because it would give a large fault domain, as well as it will go get the uh, complex organizational relationship in between those different uh, administrative uh, groups that you want to keep some. So CNTT has gone in and defined concepts uh, and a layered model that supports a shared networking in the reference model. Now I'll, I'll switch slide to the first of these concepts. So the first of the concepts here is the concept of underlay and overlay network layers, where there is a shared underlay network that separates each of the virtualization infrastructure instances. You can see on this picture the shared underlay. Let's see if the pointer is giving me. Yeah, the, the shared underlay network is then offering uh, services to one or more virtual infrastructure layers itself. Uh, and the purpose of the shared underlay network is dual. One of them is to ensure that each and every of the virtual infrastructure layers gets interconnection through the switch inside its virtual infrastructure. But the other one is to separate the different virtual infrastructure layers from each other to ensure the separation of them in between. One of the problem statements in here though is that uh, some of the uh, more high performance VNFs or CNFs are using uh, methods to bypass the virtualization infrastructure layer uh, encapsulation methods by doing, for instance, SRI or V straight down into the uh, network interface card. And by that, they will go directly on the network, on the underlay network. Then there needs to be methods to ensure that the underlay network can encapsulate those so that it belongs to the right virtual infrastructure in itself. The next concept is the concept of hardware and virtual infrastructure layers. So uh, layering those together, saying that there is a management of a separated, one separated hardware infrastructure layer and another virtualization layer that could have one virtualization instance being managed separately from another virtualization instance. That would be the one that enables the organizational separation, having one organization managing cost number one, another one of cost number two, and so on and so forth. And possibly a third one that uh, is then managing the single hardware infrastructure separately. Um, we can see in the picture here, 
three different deployment methods where you could have VNFs straight onto infrastructure as a service, uh, which is where we're coming from. Uh, and then in the first stage, it's likely that we will have CNFs on its cost layer that might sit in a VM on the infrastructure as a service layer. But then we'll later on, we'll get more uh, CNFs on their metal costs. And that's when you start to need multiple virtualization instances of the same shared underlay. The third concept we have defined, let's see if that can come up as well in the picture, yep, is the concept of SDN control of the underlay as well as the overlay network. So SDN modeled uh, is is intentional here to be possible to align with the administrative domains we talked about so that we on an operational basis can assign a particular organization to care for its virtual infrastructure uh, including its SDN control of its uh, its own uh, virtual switch domain whilst at the same time enabling uh, the underlay to be partitioning the underlay switch in between the different virtualization instances, a potential one IAS and one or more cost layers. So the shared underlay now has the separation concern that it, it can separate the different virtualization instances. And one common way is depicted in this picture where the VXLAN is divided up in VNI ranges. And uh, in this picture then, each and every of the virtualization instances get a certain VNI range. But that VNI range is also provisioned on the switching by the SDN underlay controller from a hardware infrastructure orchestrator. And by that, it can ensure and, and enforce the separation on each and every port where there is a server belonging to a specific um, virtualization domain. This can also help by that an SDN overlay controller that knows that there is an SRIOV function bypassing the switching can request a virtual termination endpoint to be installed in the hardware underlay if that becomes, if that is within the authority of that virtualization instance. The fourth concept is of the, the programmable networking fabric. And this is the emergence of a number of programmable data plane uh, resident uh, entities. That, for instance, programmable switches or programmable smart mix. That for instance, through P4 programmability you could implement really very complex functions or just the simplistic VTAP functions we talked about. Here it's very important that that programmable networking fabric is part of the shared underlay switching uh, because otherwise it won't be able to ensure the separation and enforce that each and every of the virtualization infrastructures as well as the VNF CNFs are not overstepping their authorities. So let's step into the logical uh, architecture, the, the reference model in itself. It's here mapped onto the Etsy NFV reference points, and it also shows a number of missing points where we are trying to find a suitable home for those being specified by the CNTT, as shown here as being CNTT reference points, uh, and a number of those that we don't in, care about in CNTT because they will likely be application specific. If I only go through them on a very, very high level, the, the Etsy reference points are just uh, simple lines as for instance, a VNF going into a virtual machine. So we don't need to go through that. The areas where we are missing and need to uh, define something is for instance, in when it comes to from CNFs into the container infrastructure, the actual container runtime is rather well specified. Uh, but the notion of secondary networking that telecom is uh, rather dependent on 
because it normally can't live behind a net or it needs multiple separate networks to, to separate the traffic out and the characteristics of it. Those are not uniformly specified. So this is an area where there is a lack of specification that CMT is looking for. Uh, another one is how we can do container management that is from some sort of a container infrastructure service manager to control mainly the networking from the controller, uh, container infrastructure service instance. There we have a multitude of different CNIs today that uh, are differently managed. So there is no unification there at all. So there we're also looking for ways to, to find unification. The third place is how a virtual infrastructure manager or some other type of entity, an SDN overlay controller or something like that, could be requesting, for instance, a VTAP uh, controller or those programmable functions in the programmable fabric over some sort of an hardware status or provisioning interface in here. And the reason for putting in the word hardware status in here uh, and not networking, which is the main part of this talk, is that it will also over time need to have uh, provisioning of allocation of service and accelerators into each and every virtualization instance. So we're shooting for that it will become a hardware status and provisioning interface over time. Uh, then we have a couple of interfaces where, for instance, uh, CNTT don't really care too much because it's normally dependent on the deployment or implementation. That's how the hardware infrastructure manager talks to the pool of hardware resources. There is, however, LFN uh, work going on in ODIM that uh, Walter mentioned on specifying this interface. For instance, creating a uh, switch fabric model of how automation can be done from the hardware infrastructure manager requesting some switching fabric to be able to set up things in a certain way and expose certain hierarchies of, of the topologies and so on and so forth and statuses in the interfaces. That's a promising uh, development, but we'll see how it goes. Um, over time, we believe that the hardware equipment management that today is often done through some sort of an OSS system will move into the hardware infrastructure system. So the equipment management going up to the OSS is neither something that we, we particularly care for in CMT. And the same thing really goes for the hardware infrastructure management and the virtual infrastructure management. We believe that they are, when it comes to the virtual infrastructure manager, it's rather few infrastructure distributions out there in the world and they are rather tool specific. So they probably will keep on being specific. When it comes to the hardware infrastructure management, that's very often proprietary implementations that likely will stay in that way, but hopefully complement it a little bit more with Redfish and potentially ODIM specified interfaces over time. So uh, wrapping that up now into an example. So here we have a deployment example of the reference model that, uh, and I'm, from the beginning, I would like to apologize to people that are colorblind because I have color coded the possibility for separated administrative domains in here. So each and every color represents a potential administrative domain that could be managed by a separate organization with a focus on only managing that layer. And you can see in this in the color scheme here uh, that the black basically is the single hardware infrastructure management domain. Then you can have a red IAS instance uh, running on that, which could provide uh, virtual machines up to separate tenants, two separate colors up here. But it could also, uh, in one of the virtual machines, install a uh, container as a service virtualization instance that in itself could offer containers to different tenants if that cost virtualization instance is a multi-tenant one. That will un be, be uh, unusual in the beginning because those, that support doesn't really exist in the community. That is also one of the reasons why we are expecting that there will be multiple cost instances on those systems. And therefore, the hardware infrastructure is 
the instance and the layer that will ensure the separation in between those different instances, at least initially. So I think that that pretty much wraps up uh, the, the deep dive into the CMTT reference model. And uh, let's now go over to uh, Walter and myself as well, trying to wrap this up. Show me, okay. So uh, one of the things uh, which was, I think, clear for this that we found that the networking uh, is, uh, in this pre-existence model, it's, it's a very important part and it's automation, obviously. Uh, and it's an area of concern. Uh, that's uh, it's very common uh, experience in the industry. So we need to focus on it in our evolutionary reference model. Um, at this point is a sort of call to actions and we need more industry experts to get involved in these efforts um, we, because we want to be ahead of technology evolution curve in, in this uh, uh, normalization work on this alignment. Uh, and how, uh, well, we need contribution into CMTT and other LFN projects we mentioned. Uh, the thing is that we need all to work on the industry alignment through several organizations, and uh, this includes LFN and some major projects we talked about, GSMA, and we said this uh, reference model will be published by GSMA. Etsy, we, obviously we, we, we talk about Etsy model, uh, and we want to be aligned to this as much as we possibly can and complement this uh, ONF. Um, that's, that's, for example, the programmability is happening and many others. Uh, so how we can do this practically and from CMTT perspective, on this page you can actually find, uh, uh, we're working with GitHub, so we can actually go to this if you're interested in, in reference model or or working in reference architecture implementation or certification, as we call confirmance now. Uh, you've got some uh, links here, which, uh, uh, but if you go to even Google CNTT, we'll find to get to the home page and you can find out. Also, there is a link here for the white paper, uh, which describes you know, CNTT in, uh, and its mission in, in more detail. Finally, uh, and this is, you can see our faces here. <laughs> so uh, finally, the, we're happy to uh, actually, if you want to directly to talk to us, uh, then we are actually happy to, to, to discuss many technical aspects and also the uh, interface into this community. So uh, once again, we need uh, a lot of experience and different points of view because out of this discussion, uh, always uh, a very good, uh, a common good is, is coming. Uh, at this point, I will actually thank you very much. Thomas, if you have anything to add, please do. And and then we will actually go back to our media moderator. I think you wrapped it up very nicely, uh, uh, Walter. So I, I don't really have anything to add to it. It's I'm, I'm just hoping for good questions and good participations over time here as well. And, and also thank you for your time and so forth. Yes, thank you both. Uh, that was a great presentation. Uh, we do have a couple of questions. Um, so I'll, I'll kick it off with the first one. Um, does the hardware infrastructure manager overlap with hardware abstraction interface? For example, SAI and Sonic. Yeah, that's, that's a great question from, from Ajit. I was trying to in the um, <laughs> answer in the, in the chat window there, but I can answer it verbally as well that um, Sci and Sonic will highly likely be found inside some sort of a switch fabric. And the switch fabric is not in the purview of the uh, hardware infrastructure manager itself. The hardware infrastructure manager is highly likely to interact with the switch fabric on a higher level. So there is no overlap as it is today, although that they might on a hardware to software layer uh, be sort of on the same layer. They are in different sort of components here as well. So on the picture we had earlier, if I'm trying to go back to that, um, you will in, in this picture, you would highly likely find uh, Sci and Sonic inside this box of a network resource, creating a, uh, an abstracted 
switch fabric and then you would expose status and so on and so forth for the hardware infrastructure manager. And then the hardware infrastructure manager can express the intent that it wants to be uh, setting up in the switch fabric. Great. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, thanks for that thorough response, both uh, verbally and written. Um, another question we have is uh, a little higher level, but what's the best way for a newcomer to get the lay of the land and get com comfortable with CNTT and learn how to how and where to contribute? Okay, so uh, as I said, probably the best way is just to join. Uh, it's, a, it's an open community, which is evolving as well. Uh, so uh, you don't have to be you know, uh, an official representation of uh, an organization. There are some rules you have to. So there is, uh, if you go to CNTT, there is a website. Uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is also an onboarding, I think, uh, uh, onboarding site there, the onboarding uh, instructions. That's from formality perspective and there's obviously and you know, I can talk to 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 many people and uh, like ourselves we can work and find out what's the best way to contribute. And you can also go into the GitHub as we said because we do all our work with GitHub so it's available to everybody. You have to be a member of the community to contribute but it's very easy and we are very welcome everybody. Great, thank you. Okay. Another question in from Bob Mugman. Uh, so will these new proposed interfaces for CAAS you discussed, uh, will they be proposed to be added to RA2 specs of CNTT? That's a great uh, question. And it actually has a, a dual pruned uh, answer to it. Um, one of the answers is that on a reference model layer, uh, we will try to have discussions with with our liaisons to the uh, Etsy, for instance, the IFA 029, and a few other ongoing development within Etsy. So if they would have some of, of these things on their specification roadmap, uh, they might go in there and, and then come into CNTT as interfaces we point to okay. through the higher level of, of uh, the reference model. But there will also be lower layers on, uh, for instance, the CNCF layer that is more prone to go into the RA2 level of specification. So I think both is valid to have discussions in the RM about it, as well as to have a discussion within the RA. Uh, okay, I wanted to actually add this comment, but also in general, a CNTT is not standard, you know, a building organization not SVO. Uh, so when we found the gap, uh, as, as Thomas alluded, it, we, we tried to get sort of some, as we call the upstream projects or other, other organizations to work with that, whether they can actually fill the gap. Uh, uh, at the moment, we, we haven't actually had to do anything like inventing anything new and, and, and the new standards, but we may actually have to fill the gaps in uh, somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure whether, Bob, to, uh, to your question, whether this will be really an RA2. Maybe there will be uh, um, sort of like RA3, where we will be working on some, uh, in a well of uh, way of uh, actually having those different de deployment types together of the coexistence. Um, but that that have to be actually, you know, uh, discussing further. At the moment, we've got actually quite a few in reference model. We've got a, sec a chapter related to gaps. Some of them, there's quite a few around SDN and load balancing and other aspects which are actually missing. Uh, and we will try in the next release to either find a way to resolve this or find somebody, who, who, some other organization who can help us to, to do this. Thank you. And I think that we, we, we could add to this as well. I mean, Walter, one of the reasons for doing this type of a webinar is to try to see if there are people out there in the communities around the world that have good propositions of uh, interfaces in the places where we feel that they are missing. I mean, 
if there are already defined uh, open source initiatives or standardization going on that, that are working on these, we, we love to get your feedback on, on those interfaces and see how well they fit into the CMTC model. So you're most welcome with those. Yeah, great, Absolutely. thank you. Uh, one final call for, for questions. We've got one more that's come in. So if you do have one, please go ahead and type it in the Q&A window. Um, if, uh, we did get a question about what what does the future look like, kind of at a high level? What's next for CNTT? Well, first of all, uh, let, let me just start, and I think that's you. So, on, uh, uh, well, we are just moving very close, uh, working with OPMAV, and uh, it's uh, hard to describe, it's not the purpose of this, you know, describe all this relationship. But as we said uh, at the beginning, I said there is a performance part, so, and, and implementation part, so we really want to make sure that we've got this reference implementations and making them complex and more realistic. They can be actually playgrounds where people and uh, operators and, and vendors can try those, those solutions and, and conformance, which, is, which can lead to some badging uh, and, and we can give confidence on this. So this is where we are actually going you know, in a natural progression. Uh, I think that uh, the future is we we actually talking about the future here uh, that means that we want to get more realistic implement uh, reference model and, and reference architecture with those networking aspects and we didn't mention here the other part is storage which is very as we know related to to very much to uh to networking as well so those are a lot of technical things that we have to to Results and uh, I think that the programming for so programmable like P4 uh, and networking within the switches or within uh, smart NICs is something which is really coming and we have that this is the future as well. I, I got the impression that 5G, which is uh, the, the so you know stringent requirements from the core, for example. Of, of uh, 5G, which is, has to be an OSBA, it has to be a service-based architecture, containerized. Uh, they will be driving uh, a lot of what we are doing here. One other thing I wanted to mention that, you know, while we focus on network, but this hardware infrastructure manager, I think it's uh, as far as compute and storage will have some uh, a role as well from the, this perspective that you know to manage different types of like say HP and Dell servers in, in some unique way and present this to the virtual uh, management layer like we can see here uh, it, it will be really very important uh, so I'm sure that there will be a lot of work and, and the surprises on, on its way Thomas do you have seen something different in the future no, not, not different, but maybe I could add a little other, slightly other yeah. dimension. I mean, if we dive into, for instance, what's in the hardware resource pool, I mean, one, one item here says compute resource and, and people naturally think of a CPU. But then we added another compute resource in here to in some way prepare the future for a couple of different accelerators like FPGAs, uh, smart NICs, uh, GPUs, and they're alike in here as well. So the, the ability to manage those, the ability to program those, the abilities to slice them up, to have virtualized slices of them in different shapes and form, all of those things needs to be incorporated over time. And one of the hard things here is to ensure that we try to be ahead of the curve so that we don't only have to document what others have implemented in a diversified way. Uh, for that, we need to have the good suggestions and the other communities coming in and helping us with how we do that in the best possible way. Uh, and and uh, we have to take our crystal ball and, uh, and have a deep look into what things seems to be well needed now if we go into different areas, such as, for instance, the ORAN workgroup six have a similar target there. They work together with uh, the CNTT, for instance, through the uh, edge uh, work stream and so on and so forth. So 
So there is multiple things going on in the technical area here as well, aligning with other things. Yeah, and, and I would comment that, I think I alluded to the beginning that from my experience and, and experience shared with me from many uh, different participants in, in this uh, community, it looks like networking, storage, uh, SDN, of the major, you know, uh, problems uh, and complexities when you when you build, how to get them together. Um, so it's relatively, you know, easy if you can use this word to say, be an open stack uh, in base cloud and, and and put something on. But just to make it make it work in the real telco environment, when you get so many different uh, functions and different uh, uh, different needs and different requirements and different standards and uh, it's really very hard. So we're trying to help this to make it closer to the practical application, which was part of the topic, right, we just for this webinar. Um, that's probably the future. Yeah. Thank you both. Um, so I think it, I think it's time to wrap up. Um, I just want to thank all of our attendees. Thanks for folks for asking great questions and a big thank you to both of our speakers who are based in Australia and Sweden. So this is uh, really an inconvenient time for them to be online. So we really appreciate your flexibility there. Um, anyone who did register to register for the webinar will receive an email with a link to the recording, which will be on demand for viewing later as well. And if you have any questions, uh, please just send them to pr at lfnetworking.org and we can get you in touch with the appropriate uh, spokespeople. All right, thank you everyone. Have a good day and uh, we hope to see you on a future LF Networking webinar. Thank you. Thank you.